Hello everyone, welcome to Spitfire SecDev. In this video, I'm going to be going through some more Linux commands that will be useful as you begin to learn how to use Linux. I'll also be going through the man pages, which is short for manual, which teaches you how to use these commands. Let's get started. Before we start, I just want to make it clear that it's going to be impossible for anyone to teach you all the commands available in the Linux operating system. But over time, as you use Linux more often, and as you get more comfortable on the command line, you're going to find that you repeatedly need to do certain things, and you tend to accomplish those tasks with the same set of commands. If I want to print the contents of a file, I know from memory there's about two or three commands that I can use depending on how I want it to be printed, what type of file it is, stuff like that. If I want to download something, I know I have a couple options also at my disposal. So as I start going through some of these more fundamental commands, just realize that you need to do some work outside of this video to get more comfortable with the command line. The best thing to do, in my opinion, what I recommend is trying to, once you, if you read a man page for a command and it mentions other commands and in the context of the task that you're trying to accomplish, it sounds like it might be useful or it might apply in a very similar scenario, or basically it sounds like something you might need to use. Definitely go ahead and read that man page as well. Also use Google, you know, maybe do some quick Google search of like top 20, top 50 Linux commands and just take that article or take a blog post, take something that you find and go into the man pages and start doing some personal research of your own. Figure out, you know, how Linux, what capabilities are available to you on Op on this operating system. Otherwise, you're going to be dependent upon graphical interfaces that a piece of software exposes to you. And from the start with Linux and the man pages, they made it very clear that people should be very comfortable on the command line because they put a lot of time into the documentation. So just in summary, definitely need to spend some time on your own getting comfortable with commands that both I, both commands that I show you and ones that you come across. Um, in future videos, I'm going to be referencing commands. I'm not going to be explaining exactly how they work each time. That's just going to take too long. So if in future videos you hear me say something or I run something on the command line and you're not sure what it means or why I used it, go over to the man page or you know shoot me a message and I'll point you towards a resource if it's not something that's you know documented by Linux itself. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's get started. For this video, I'm going to be using my personal terminal. I'm not going to be working in the virtual environment because essentially it's going to be the same. I use Linux every day for my personal work and so I'm going to be using my environment for this video. Open up Linux Mint and you're going to be opening up the terminal again, just like we did the last video. It should be in the bottom left. And from there, the first thing we're going to get into is understanding what the man pages are. So in the previous video, we used some commands like ls to list files and cd to change directories. Besides those commands, what other commands are on a Linux operating system? How do we learn what commands are there? What options are available for each command? With Linux, there comes packaged with the Linux operating system this thing called a man page. And each command has its own man page. There's even a man page for the man pages. So Pretty much everything on Linux has very extensive documentation. What we're going to be doing today is learning some new commands and figuring out how to, you know, if we want to perform some type of action, what commands are available to us to accomplish those things. So I think a good place to start is to first man the man page. What this is going to show is how to actually read the manual pages. We'll see that they're named typically by the name of the program, the ls command, the move command, the copy command. Whenever we want to look up the documentation for one of those commands, typically we can just do man and then the name of the command. This table right here is also pretty important. Each man page is broken up into sections. Depending upon what command it is, it's going to have different sections. So a good example of a command that has various meanings depending upon the context and thus it has different section numbers that coincide with the same command 
is the socket command. So there is a system call called socket that is used by the kernel for low level network operations. Anytime you need to send any sort of communication from a process, it's going to use a socket. There's also a man page under section seven that just has a miscellaneous kind of description about what a socket is in the context of network operations. So it's tied to the C programming language because Linux is primarily programmed in C. And so this man page gives a brief description of how socket plays a role in network operations. So if we want to look at these two different sections, we would do man and then the page number and then the command. So man to socket, I'll get into sort of what these different sections within a specific man page mean. But in general, if you go to man to socket, it talks about creating an endpoint for communication, returns a file description, and it just describes how, you know, what a socket is and how it works. If we go to man seven socket, very similar describing how it is used. However, this one's more focused on socket layer user interface. It's just a, you know, a minute difference, but it has different meaning depending upon the context that you use the word socket. That's why it's split up into different sections. If we were to go back and type, you know, man five socket, we're not going to get a man entry because those are only two pages for the same command is two and seven. So the way that I knew that the socket command had only two pages is there's a way to search for a command in the man pages. It's basically just a search feature. And the way that you enable that search feature, if we do man man again, we can look and see you know, how to do search. So up here, this first section is a synopsis of all the different options you have available. Something like this is pretty hard to read and really, you know, you're not gonna get a lot of information from this part of the synopsis. Um, it just summarizes all the different flags. Down here though, when we get to examples, this is pretty useful. Note that the man pages were written you know, when Linux was first becoming an operating system, when it was first being written, and it doesn't get updated a ton, especially the older commands, the ones that were with the original operating system when it first came out. Some commands and some things might, you know, not be very applicable to you. If we get down here to overview, we can get, you know, more kind of a prose instead of pure syntax, get a kind of description of how everything works, um, behind the scenes, and then we get down here to options. And this is what I was talking about earlier. If we have a command, how do we know what options are available? By default, man either you know has default settings or it assumes that you want certain arguments automatically. But if we want to gain more control and fine tune the output of the commands and what it's doing, you definitely need to start using options. So right here we get the main modes of operation. We have TAC F and TAC K. Um, these are the two that I'm going to be focusing on in this video. So TAC F, you could also use TAC TAC what is. A single dash is what comes with Linux and it's the Linux standard. The double dash and then a, you know, a word is something that's called GNU or GNU uh, options. And their Linux does not have these available, but pretty much every distribution of Linux out there is gonna have another piece of software that gets integrated into Linux called GNU. Um, and it stands for GNU, not Unix, and it's, it repeats itself because each G stands for GNU, and so it just keeps repeating itself. Just kind of a little history tidbit there. But most people, when they talk about Linux, they really mean GNU Linux, and some people think you should say GNU Linux, but most people just say Linux. Anyways, that's why you have these two side by side, because you have the potential to use either one. They mean the same thing, just depends on what capabilities are available. So. Tac F, Tac K. Tac F, it displays a short description from the manual page if available. So this means you have to type the command exactly as it's prescribed. So socket, if there's not a socket command, let's say that the socket command is actually socket underscore H or socket underscore Z, and we do man Tac F socket, it's not going to return anything because we didn't give it the exact command. However, we have the tac k option where it says search the short manual page descriptions for keywords and explain any matches. So this is a more kind of liberal approach to searching where it doesn't have to meet the exact command name. It's just going to look in the description and if it finds a keyword, it's going to display those matches. So 
Let's go back out here and use both of them. If we do man, tack f, socket, we get you know these two pages, and these are the only two man pages regarding the command socket. If we do man, tack k, socket, we get a bunch of stuff. You'll see in the description we got you know socket, socket, everything here and there is talking about a socket in some way. So if you want to learn about how Linux networking happens and what it means to actually program or implement uh, networking, you know, how, how does Linux do networking? How do computers connect to each other? How does that all work? A socket's a really good entry point because that's like the foundational building block for any sort of connection as a socket. And so if you were to type this man dash f socket and you were to go through all these man pages, um, some are more useful than others, but if you were to go through this and you were to, you know, read a good chunk of these, you would have a pretty good understanding of how Linux networking works, at least under the hood. And you know, implementation depends upon your ability to program. That's totally different. But just from a, you know, if you're, you know, browsing the web and you see people using things like receive and bind and accept using those types of keywords, you'll have a pretty good understanding of what they're talking about. This is a really good resource using the TAC K option for man pages, because you can start looking into certain topics and just get a better understanding of what command line you know, tools are available. Mantac K, Mantac F. If you want to see what pages are available for a command that you already know, TAC F is a good one. And then if you want to you know, start learning about a certain topic, you know, we could do Mantac K and then let's do printer just to see like how Unix has stuff with printers. And you see you know, a bunch of stuff. We got, oh, let's see, you know, Cups enable, cups disable. We see a lot of stuff about cups. What is cups? This is actually uh, a big part of how this is kind of the protocol, or this is just the way that Linux implements, you know, printers. How does how do we communicate with printers? Um, cups is kind of the way that that's implemented on Linux. So if you want to learn about you know printers and stuff, you can start reading through these things. We also got um, you know LP, LPC, LPQ. These are all you know different. You look at your devices, look at the status. On Windows, you would go to your devices interface and you would go to your device manager and you would see like all your devices and you could configure stuff. Well, you can do all the same stuff on the command line, but I'm gonna bet that this has a lot more functionality just based on the breadth and depth that Linux goes into with having everything live on the command line. So now that we have a basic understanding of the man pages and how we can search through the man pages to find various commands and research different topics. Let's utilize something that I personally didn't learn about until recently, and I wish it was available to me when I first started learning Linux. There's actually kind of a tutorial guide within the man pages for Linux itself and the Linux command line. And the name of that is intro. So if we do man intro, they literally have a manual that introduces you to a bunch of common Linux commands. And right now we're on section one. By default, it goes to section one. If section one doesn't exist, then it'll check section two, then section three. So if, for a man page, there's only section seven, and that's the only one that's available. And you just type man, and then the name of that command, it's going to pull up section seven. And it just, it just starts from one, goes all the way down until it finds the first one and displays that, unless you give it a specific section. So going through here, this gives you a really good overview of how first... For example, Linux is a flavor of Unix. Okay, what is Unix? Um, you could you know, research that, kind of figure out what is Unix, which is because it's where Linux came from. If you like the history of computers or just generally like history, you can kind of read about where Linux came from. It talks about the difference between GUIs, where you can you know, point and click, drag and drop, and then you got the command line interface. It's faster, more powerful. It finds out, you have to find out where the commands are, um, and then it says, it's how you get started. So. I didn't know this existed until pretty recently, but I've been reading through it and it's pretty cool. If we get down here to shell, we'll see um, the shell is what the com is the command interpreter. So right now we're in a shell. It just simply interprets commands. The standard shell is called sh, obviously short for shell. And then you also have all these other shells. So if you wanted to research the different command line interfaces available to you, you can start looking at these. And as you scroll down, you know we're familiar with ls and cp and move already, rm. And then you see some other commands like diff and grep. Um, those are, those, I use those a lot. Those are pretty important. And just, you know, just give this a read. I'm not going to read it for you any more than I already have. But if you want to go to the next page, actually, let's do this. Let's 
man tack f intro. They have a man page for every single intro, you know, out there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight. They got all of them. So every single type of section for a man page has its own intro. And that's going to give you a lot of the starter commands that you know they find useful. So let's hop over to man three intro. Um, these are library functions. So a lot of the code that gets written to implement Linux and to build on top of Linux, you know, most people are writing in C uh, if they're doing any sort of operating system programming. Um, there's a lot of libraries that are in Linux that you can use. And so, you know, this is not too long. It's just a quick overview, but you get to see certain things like libc, which is the standard C library. You got libm, which is the math library. You know, you got some other stuff here, but you get the C also. And this is like related topics. You know how like in a blog post you see, you know, what to read next or there's suggestions about what you might find interesting. If you found that article interesting, well, most man pages have a C also section where they give you similar commands or other things to research. So definitely keep an eye on those. And if something in here piques your interest and they mention a command, then you can just man one of these pages. Another thing I forgot to mention, in the parentheses, they'll tell you the section. So there might be multiple, there is multiple intros. Um, they mention actually that section two is going to read in conjunction with section three. That's because libraries and system calls kind of go hand in hand. So that's just a brief introduction to how to start learning how to use stuff on the command line. I'm going to post a couple links in the description where I go through, where they go through um, some useful commands, gives you like a top 25, and really it's just a place to get started. I, once again, I'm not able to teach you every command on Linux. I'm not going to try to, it's just going to, that would take forever. Um, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to pretend that you don't have the capacity to research this stuff on your own. The reason I'm providing these videos is to give you a, you know, a good path to follow and just kind of help you get started. But a lot of the learning is going to be on you. Appreciate you watching this video. I hope that as we start getting into uh, more advanced topics and we start to learn Linux a little bit better, um, you research and Google and ask me questions. And if you want to know how to do X, Y, or Z, and you're not sure which command, you know, even to start looking at, definitely shoot me a message. Um, I'll be sure to help you out. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.